Welcome to Shabbos Kavadonu. This week we are dealing with Parsha's bow. Just a quick idea that I saw in the Daz that came echoed in many other areas as well. And that is the concept of looking at the Makos in a linear way. If you look at the Makos in uh, a format where it's a group, it's clustered, that you go from Dam, the progression goes from Dam all the way up to Makos Bechoros, and the lens, I guess, would be through that of someone um, attacking a country, where first you cut off the water supply in Makas Dam, and then you go to Tzfardea, which is the loud noises, bombarding them with, with sounds. We know the croaking of the frogs is incessant, followed by the distant warfare with the arrows and missiles, progressing all the way to Choshech, putting them in prison, and Makas Bechoros putting to death the leaders and the heads and the various people that that were your enemy. So we see that Hashem really led a full-fledged war in the Mitzrayim from start to finish. Something that might get lost in translation is if you're someone that's going through these things as a Mitzri or at different times in history, being afflicted by things that might be, you could possibly have written off to natural environmental issues and plagues, then it's very easy to lose context and say, ah, oh, it's just a bunch of disparate things, bad stuff's happening, it's COVID, it's uh, killer bees, whatever it may be, whatever the next thing is, chas shalom. But we know that it's a never-ending battle with the environment, with germs, bacteria, civilization, etc. If you're looking at them in a disparate way, it's very easy to lose context. So one of the things that we focus on when we're going through the Haggadah, as well as reviewing the parshas during the year, is keeping it together as one big picture. This I would recommend as well on a day-to-day -day basis, when one wakes up and their coffee was cold, and they hit traffic, and just things are going wrong. It's not little pieces of things. You're Hashem sending a message, possibly. It's, it's a global message. Put it all together. Your coffee wasn't just cold, and that wasn't a, it wasn't a bunch of separate pieces. It all comes together. You're getting sent a message. Try to interpret, reinterpret it. This week, we're lucky. We're privileged to have with us an amazing, amazing um, person that I met earlier this year. Her name is Malki Weingarten. She is a from female film producer, and she does an amazing job. She has a great personality. I hope you enjoy it. Have a great job. Reporting live from Borough Park, Brooklyn, where people here do not talk to themselves loud on the phone, where funny hats hold smartphones in front of their faces. Unless you're Malky Weingarten, that's a different story. <laughs> you get away with murder. So I was asked to speak about the Parsha. So first I laughed. <laughs> Me? That's funny. Uh, but then I said, you know what? I'm a spiritual person. I love to connect and I love to hear people speaking and telling me things, even people who aren't speakers, telling me things that inspired them so I can learn from that. And I said, okay, fine. I'm gonna try. First, I have to find out what Parsha it was. Then, okay, wait, I'm going the wrong direction. Hold on. Then I had to remember what was in that Parsha. Oh! Okay, Parsha's bow, the Makos. So, this is a fascinating Parsha, but what fascinated me most all the time was that Paro was really... I didn't understand, like, what's taking him so long to, to realize that he just has to let the Jews go? Thousand shouted, no, let my people go. Look, why, 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 what was he holding on to? He just couldn't let go. And he was suffering himself, which is the crazy thing. His people, the Mitzrayim themselves, the Egyptians, they were saying, Paro, please just let them out. Let them out, let them go, please, we beg of you. We, we don't want them here, we don't want all of this. Um, and he couldn't do it. He himself was suffering. Uh, we know he was suffering because he kept calling Moshe and saying, please, please, just stop it, stop it. Yes, yes, I'll do whatever it takes. But then he couldn't do it. And it made me realize that we are a lot of the times like that. We're stuck in certain patterns. We're stuck in certain behaviors. We're stuck in certain thoughts. And we don't even realize ourselves that we are suffering from our own selves because we can't let go of those behaviors and we know we should. So for everybody, it's something different. But for example, when we dive in in the morning, we say one of the brachos are Mati Rasurim. Hashem, thank you for uh, um, freeing the prisoners. And really, I'm thinking to myself, well, what prisoners are we talking about here? Like, well, 
Trump just pardoned some of our people. So that was, uh, that was amazing, but that doesn't happen every day, if you know what I'm saying. And in general, what does that mean, freeing our prisoners? And um, I did a little bit of research on that, and there's a deeper meaning, of course, and that is that we are prisoners in our own selves. And we keep ourselves in chains. We keep our own selves in chains. Yes, you heard right, because we have self-doubt. We are afraid to do projects that we know we should, that we know we want to, but we don't let ourselves loose. We are prisoners in our own fears, insecurities, um, self-doubt. And um, if I was a psychologist or a psychiatrist, I could probably come up with more, but that's all I can think of right this second. But you know what I'm talking about. And so here is my wish to you right now and here is my blessing to you may this week and may the coming year be a year where we're not stuck in our own um unhealthy behaviors or unhealthy thoughts or self-disparaging thoughts um we are able to let go and let go of all those things that are holding us prisoner that we are holding our own selves prisoner with. Yeah. Amen. This week as well, we're also joined by Rabbi Rafi Mullet, a recurring, uh, hopefully a recurring guest on this uh, weekly Shabbos Rav Torah. Have a great Shabbos. See you next week. Leavening agent man. Leavening agent man. Well, hello. My name is Rafi Mollet, and what are you doing in my living room? These farm are behind me to let you know that I know what I'm talking about. In this week's Parsha, Parsha's bow, we have the commandment of the matzah. Ushmarta es ha matzos. The Torah says you must guard the matzos. Guard the matzos from what? Guard them from becoming chametz, of course. Now, our rabbis tell us that in this verse, there is a hint to the following words. Don't read it as, Ushmartem as hamatzos, guard the matzos. Read it as, Ushmartem as hamitzvos, guard the mitzvos, guard the commandments. What does that mean? The rabbis elaborate. Mitzvah habal yodcho al tachmitzena. A mitzvah that comes to your hand, don't allow it to become chametz. What does that mean? If you have the opportunity to do a mitzvah, don't wait. Just like the dough will become chametz, it'll rise, it'll be leavened if you wait. So too, if you don't do a mitzvah right away, it's going to also become spoiled. It'll become, eh, I'm not so interested in doing it, I'll do it later, I'll do it at the last minute, I missed it. We're going to ruin that mitzvah. So, Ushmarta Masamatzois. Guard the matzahs. You should learn from there. Shmarat the mesha mitzvahs. Just like the matzah shouldn't become chametz, so too the mitzvah shouldn't become chametz. Now, what exactly is going on over here? Is this just some kind of a wordplay? I'm going to take two words that sound alike and say they are the same. Isn't that cheating? Says the holy shla. No, not at all. Listen to how deep. A human being is actually a matzah. A human being is actually a piece of dough. How so? Because Hashem took from a big big lump of dough, which was the clay of the earth, He took out a portion of it. He took out a portion of it, a clot of it, and He uplifted it. He turned it into a human being. He imbued it with a heligan neshama, a holy soul. And in so doing, He made the human being out of this piece of dough of the earth. Now, if we would remain humble, if we would remain flat and humble like a matzah, what would we do? We would listen to Hashem, we would serve and we would keep all the mitzvahs. So when we make ourselves a matzah, a dough that turns into a flat, humble matzah, that's how we listen to Hashem and keep the commandments. But if not, what happens? There is something called seor shebaitz shebaisa, the leavening agent in the dough. It's the leavening agent man and what happens when the leavening agent man in the dough he the yetzar hara the evil inclination that's within us what does he do he puffs us up he makes us egotistical and say 
What? Who is this God that I should serve him? I want to serve myself. I want to make everything all about me. We turn into opera singers. Me, 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 me. So we don't want to allow the leavening agent man to turn us into chametz, into a puffed up, egotistical piece of dough full of hot air saying, I am what I'm all about. I'm going to do what I want and not what the Creator wants. We have to make sure that we remain a matzah. We have to make sure that we remain humble. So actually, in a very literal sense, says the Shla, Ushmartem as hamatzos, you should guard the matzahs not to become, not to become chametz, is exactly telling us that we should guard ourselves to maintain our nature as a humble matzah that serves Hashem and keeps the mitzvahs and not spoiled by the leavening agent man, turned into an opera singer, and then, God forbid, spoil our attitude toward the mitzvahs. I hope everyone has a wonderful Shabbos. Check me out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Reb Malet, and be well. Bye. I'm not